From the Plymouth Ice Center, it's CCX Media's coverage of the 2021 Turkey Trot Tournament, featuring four of the best high school hockey teams in the state. Hi, welcome everybody along with Dan Fick and I'm Joe Molina. Dan, we're thrilled to be back this year. Last year, weirdest hockey season ever. We missed the Turkey Trot last year due to the, due to the COVID shutdown. We're back and better than ever. Great matchups here tonight on day, day one. It's the number one team in the state, Maple Grove, against number 70, Dinah. What a matchup. If anything, it's three of the four teams in this tournament made the state tournament last year. And guess which one didn't? The Diner. Oh, my gosh. They're looking for a little bit of a comeback this year. Only averaged about three goals a game last year. Maple Grove was 21-2, and two, eight goals a game. A little different story this year. Yeah, Maple Grove coming off back-to-back -back seasons that finished at the XL Energy Center and trips to the state tournament. And it's Edina, who was shut out the last two seasons, not even getting to the section championship. They're hoping that they have the type of team that can get back there again this year. But let's start with Maple Grove first. You mentioned it. They had an excellent season last year. They scored over seven goals a game more than 10, 12 times last year. Maple Grove had an explosive offense. They lost a lot of that scoring but they have a good solid defensive core returning and they're gonna to have to try to win from the defensive side of the puck a little bit this year. Absolutely, they were very impressed in the pregame or preseason scrimmages with their defense and their goaltending. So they feel safe there. The problem is they gotta replace 111 goals and another 19 because two of the young men that play in this team also playing football tonight. So they're not gonna be here tonight. We'll identify them later. But Todd Berglund, you know, always the optimist. He'll continue a strong forward-checking style, and if they can get a few breaks in the power play and some mistakes by Edina, who knows? A lot of that goal scoring, they hope, is going to come by way of the junior Landon Gunderson. He showed that he could pour it in. He, he had a great season last year, scored a lot of goals as a sophomore. As a junior this year, he led the high school elite league this fall in scoring, and uh, he's going to have a lot, of, a, a lot of weight on his shoulders in the scoring department. Oh, he really is. His two line mates are gone, so he's got to figure something out. But 21 goals last year, two power play goals, shorthanded goal. This kid can play, man. He's an up and down the ice guy, and he can fire the puck. Edina has obviously some high-end talent. Last year was one of the years where they kind of played a little bit of the younger players, had a youth movement, and they're going to hope that benefits them this year. Their feature player, Jimmy Clark, a junior, one of the most outstanding juniors in the state, already committed to the University of Minnesota. He's a leader, he's a goal scorer, and the Hornets are happy to have him back. Yeah, he's had, he had a great season last year. He's 15 goals, power play goal scorer. Um, up and down player, really mixes well. Uh, up and down, plays the style Kurt Giles wants him to play, their coach. You know, out of nine sophomores, they've had two that stepped up. They need more though this year. They've got to score more than three goals a game, and Jimmy Clark's got to be part of it. All right, it's two of the powerhouses kicking it off here tonight as we drop the puck on the 2021 season. It's Edina and Maple Grove coming up next. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is now available on Roku and Apple TV. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including daily newscasts and full sporting events. To find the app, go to the store and search CCX and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. Now available on Roku and Apple TV. Back at the Plymouth Ice Center, dropping the puck on the 2021-22 season in awesome fashion with just an outstanding matchup between the Edina Hornets and the Maple Grove Crimson. Maple Grove trying to go back to state for the third year in a row and they have seen a lot of success with this group. This group right here, the reason why they are ranked number one, despite all the losses of players they've had over the years, this group has been yes. very successful at the youth levels. They have two Bantam State Championships and a Pee Wee State Championship among these kids. Yep. <laughs> they are winners. Yep. And they have a one runner up. And there's Coach Berglund right there for the Crimson. As Dan Go ahead, Dan. He said he loves the cohesiveness of this team. These kids play together. They like playing with one another. They've had some good experience over the past few years. He's not worried about attitude or anything like that. And he says, if we start out badly, we will recover. So he's not too worried about it. Impressive talent up and down the roster for these two teams, not only this year, but over the last few years as well. 
And, and you look at it, I, I took a glance at Edina right now. They have over 15 players on Division One rosters this year. Hmm. Maple Grove, four players from the Crimson got drafted last year. I mean, two of them played for Maple Grove last year. Two of them were either playing for the U.S. national team or, or juniors. But yep. four members of that would-be senior class last year got drafted. You're talking about just a, a plethora of talent on both, both these programs. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to take a break, have a national anthem here. We'll be back as we drop the puck here for the 2021 Turkey Trot. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk, Walk a, mile a mile in my, in my shoes. shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse. Walk, Walk a mile in my shoes. Back at the Plymouth Ice Center, better known as the Pick, it's Maple Grove and Edina as we start the 2021 hockey season with the turkey trot the way it's supposed to be. As you look right there, there's the starting goaltender for the Crimson, Robbie, or excuse me, Toby Hop. Hop started two games last year, got one shutout in that time, save percentage of 90%. And on the other side, it's Robbie Klarkowski, who got the bulk of the playing time last year in the net for Edina. He's a junior, and you saw his numbers there as he dropped the puck. And we're set here to begin the turkey trot as Edina will toss the puck into the zone to begin things. Maple Grove back to get it is Lucas Margano. Margano turns it over at the dot right there. A great scoring chance for Riley Spindler as Margano Ooh. tried to go up the near side and had that pass deflected into the slot area. Dangerous play. Boy, that was a bad bounce. Oh my gosh. So Hop got tested right away and stepped to the task. Landon Gunderson centering the top line for Maple Grove. It's Keenan Fritz centering for Edina. Fritz wins the draw. Shot from the point there from Wyatt Wurst. Blockered into the corner by Hop. Now Maple Grove will try to break it out up the near side. It's Fisher who plays it to the neutral zone. Andy Dino will try to regroup. Bouncing puck scooped up by Spindler. Spindler throws it across the slot area for Preston Sexton. And puck goes into the corner. It's Margano playing it up the wall. Tipped across nice. the center. And here comes Clayton Fisher into the zone. Fisher throws one on net. Tarkowski sees his first puck cleanly and makes a blocker save. Up the wall it goes, and out of the zone comes Spindler. Spindler plays it ahead to Jimmy Clark. Here comes the future gopher on the four check. Good body check there as he hits Lanau for Maple Grove. Now it's scooped up there by Trey Fetchko. Fetchko oh, centers it up front, there's a the goal! Fetchko finds beautiful. A.J. Dahl, and Dole puts it home, putting the Hornets up one to nothing. Fetchko, Dahl, and uh, Jimmy Clark. Boy, instantaneous, man. Got on it right away, got it deep in the zone. Eventually, let Fetch go in front of the net with that puck coming back there, and he finally buries it. Tough place to put Hop in for the Maple Grove goalie, but Edina on the board first was very aggressive play. As you see, the nice play there by Fetchko, and then Dahl gets two attempts at it. it. was denied on the first one, got his own rebound and scores. The senior gets Edina on the score sheet first. Dahl had eight goals, 14 assists last year as a junior. And he gets the Hornets on the board with a 1-0 lead here against the Crimson. And he did so well there, Joe. He stayed in front of the net instead of sliding behind it like a lot of forwards like to do. He stayed right in front, and he got his opportunity, and then he buried it. And, you know, Edina essentially had its first line on the ice for the second shift of the game, so they got a little bit of a, a lineup advantage there. They were up against Maple Grove's second line, and they took advantage. Puck now at the neutral zone. Edina plays it to the Crimson blue line. Now it goes into the zone. Back to get it is Beck Picanato. Picanato takes it in front of his own goal, now reverses it back behind the goal, finding Stelgis. Another turnover there, puck gets played out in front of the net. Quick shot by Edina, that one hit traffic in front. And Maple Grove will be happy to ice this one down. They are under duress here early here in Plymouth as Edina is on the attack. Should I say the Hornets are buzzing? I, it's going to come. I'm happy it's from you first. Yes. <laughs> I mean, oh my gosh, what a deluge. I mean, it, A.J. Dahl with his first one of the year, but boy, the forecheck has been ferocious, especially that first line. I mean, a tremendous amount of speed on that line, Joe. Absolutely. Edina off the faceoff won it, but Maple Grove was able to poke it out to the neutral zone. Nice play there by Nathan, uh, Nathan Jaglo. 
And uh, Puck gets played at the point. Shot there from Parker Wente, a name you'll recognize. Last name, his younger brother of Taylor Wente, who had a fantastic career at both Maple Grove and then the University of Minnesota. Minnesota yes. she's, she's back actually coaching in the Maple Grove youth program now. What a, Great. what a tremendous asset that is. Oh, I love that. But, yeah, and then Coach Berglund talked before the game. Wente's one of the guys he's... He was very happy with his performance in the pregame or preseason scrimmages up north in Moorhead when they made the trip there, and he played well. And uh, he's not too worried about the price, but right now, boy, that four check of down is kind of showing a little differently. Matt Banner both on the ice for Dina down there on the four check. Puck gets played down in the corner. That's Willie Johnson with it. Watch Willie Johnson. He's only a sophomore, but he played significant minutes last year as a freshman for Dina. There's a couple of players like that, only sophomores, but have a whole season of varsity experience under their belt already for the Edina program. I mean, you're, you're yeah. playing varsity minutes as a freshman in Edina. You're doing something right. Well, he comes back as the third uh, leading scorer on the team right now from last year. John Halverson, a sophomore, will take the draw for Edina, paired up against Landon Gunderson, the dynamic junior for the Crimson. Off the draw, it was Aaron Tol Tallis. Played it to his partner, and Maple Grove turns it over. There's a little bit of nervousness, it looks like. It, either that for, from the defense of Maple Grove. They've popped the puck up a little bit here, but it might just be nervousness, but it also just might be the speed and tenacity of this Edina Forcheck. Daniel Nelson gets to the puck and gets it over up the middle for Gunderson. Gunderson slides it over to Fisher, who missed wide. Oh. And Edina will play the puck out to the neutral zone. Back to get it there is Grant Linnell. Scooped up by Nelson. Nelson gets checked off the puck, loses it, but now gets it back. Here's Gunderson. Gunderson leaves it for Nelson, had it in his skates, couldn't get it to his forehand, and then a shot by Fisher was blocked. Fisher and Nelson on the work here. Nelson tried to throw it on goal, missed a little bit wide. And he had Gunderson right there waiting for a rebound. Now the puck gets played up the wall, waiting for it there is Clark. And we have a stoppage of play, and faceoff will be coming up back inside Edina's own. See a nice setup here coming in real deep as Gunderson makes a nice play there to a great pass over to Fisher, who got a shot off. And then another opportunity is they forecheck it nice and hard. Uh, and usually it's Maple Grove that's got the aggressive forecheck here, and it uh, looks like they're getting their feet underneath them right now, Joe. Maple Grove wins the faceoff. They get a shot there from the point that hits a skate and travels into the corner. Nice job keeping possession there by Steenerson. And Steenerson throws one on, gloved cleanly by Klarkowski. With Blake Steenerson taking things into his, matters into his own hands there with some puck <laughs> possession and throwing it on goal. Steenerson's one of the, we mentioned the size of Maple Grove. Yeah. Steenerson looks like one of the bigger ones out there. Well, he had no problem throwing it around that time and just get away from me, little bug. and asserted himself. We'll see how the physicality here, if it does affect our Hornets at all. Here comes Edina and that top line once again. Dole tries to put it up ahead for Clark, just a little bit too far, and Toby Hopp will quickly cover that one up for the Crimson with a faceoff upcoming in the Maple Grove zone. Well, this, this line here has been tremendous. The Clark line for Edina here with, you know, Fetchko and uh, uh, Wall and did, did a great job. Here's Todd Berglund, seventh season here. He's gotten a Crimson in the state tournament three times, two consecutively, and he's open for a third in a row. Yeah, he's already uh, uh, established himself as the most successful coach in Maple Grove program history, and you know, he, he's got a good thing going because he's got a tremendous youth program that keeps on feeding him talent as well, and so he's, as long as he keeps on winning, he's going to be in good shape. Been, there hadn't been too many uh, youth state tournaments at the band and the PV level that haven't had a Maple Grove team in it. <laughs> no, no. Shot from the point there, blocked as Picanato tried to get one on goal. Now Picanato deals with a bouncing puck at the neutral zone. That's always a tough play when you have a, a Hornet bearing down on you. And Edina will toss it into the zone. It's Jackson Nevers. Nevers dumps it in. Now Maple Grove gains possession here. It's Bennett Glad. Glad one on four. Does a good job of getting the puck deep and allows his Crimson teammates to get the line change completed. Oh, nice play there from the number four. Aaron told us for uh, Maple Grove that uh, the blue line just stopped a breakaway possibility by Edina. And Tolos makes another nice play there on the exit out of the Crimson zone. Shot Ooh. by the Crimson. Goes out the back wall. Great chance. Oh, a couple of great chances right there as 
it was Jaron Geese who put the puck towards the net, then got the rebound off the carom. Actually, I'm going to take a look. It's not Geese. It's 16, Jay Ellingson. Ellingson here. It's Geese who puts it off the goal. Well, it is. It's Geese who follows it up as well. He gets attacked into the back wall there. But great scoring chance there. That puck bounced over the shoulder of Klarkowski. Unfortunately for Klarkowski, it went just wide. All of a sudden, the Crimson are climbing their way back into this thing. Off the faceoff, Crimson were able to get the puck down into the corner. Edina quickly out with it, though. Here comes Clark across the red line. Into the Maple Grove zone. Tried to leave it there for Dole. Or Dahl, rather. And uh, here comes the Crimson with it. Trying to break it out unsuccessfully. Now regrouping is Tolas. Tolas handles the puck, plays it across ice. Nobody not sure who's going to go get the puck for Maple Grove. They kind of had that miscommunication there. Nobody went and got it, and Clark almost made him pay. Ooh, that was almost a really bad mistake, Joe. That was a total lack of communication between the D and the forward. There's Lanau and Nelson kind of st stared at the puck. Nelson expected the defenseman to get it. Lanau was hoping that Nelson would grab it. And these are some of these young mistakes you'll see from a young roster. Nelson, a sophomore, Lanau, a junior, and just Maple Grove trying to settle into this one a little bit. They are doing a couple of things pretty well. They're winning faceoffs and getting some chances off the draw. See if they can do that here once again as jumping into the circle is Finn Brink. A talented junior for this Maple Grove team. Puck gets played out to the neutral zone. Picked up there by Wente and Wente played it up the near boards. Edina's offside. They will take up. Margano back to get it for Maple Grove. Margano, another junior on this Maple Grove team. Played significant minutes as a sophomore last year and there's a whistle here odd play I don't really understand the call it must have been either a, played with a high stick or a hand pass because you know, John Halverson was looking at it like he did I throw it outside you know and no he didn't there was something else it was a high stick I think but I remember seeing it but yeah coach Giles asking for an explanation too all of a sudden there was a yeah. face off inside the uh, defensive zone for the opponents Wente plays that puck back in his zone he was able to keep the zone nicely as, even though as he was backing out here comes a chance for the Crimson into the slot. Shot right on. Tarkowski makes the save off the quick snapshot from Lucas Bush. Now it's Wente. He has it knocked off his stick off the forecheck from Fritz. Behind the goal it goes. Margano gets tied up. Margano has it once again for Maple Grove. Up the wall he goes. Gets around the forecheck. Gains the red line and will flip it in. Maple Grove will get a line change. Nice job by the junior defenseman there. Now it's Matt Bowman getting it for the Hornets. He plays it up to the neutral zone. Flaherty turns it over. Chance for the Crimson. Shot. Blocker save made by Tarkowski. Maple Grove starting to get some shots. That was Jaglo. Jaglo in front has a chance. Now the puck bounces right over the stick of Geese. And here comes Edina. Nevers around the outside. It's Ooh. Geese trying to get around the defense of why it worst? Worst was able to use a nice little angle and some physical play to disrupt that rush. Geese deflects into the zone now and Worst back to get it for the Hornets. Plays it off the boards. Great catch on the wall there. What a fantastic job done by Willie Johnson to get that breakout initiated. That outlet pass was really special. Puck scooped up there by Jack Kernan. He'll flip it up through the neutral zone. No icing. Eddie Renoving back to get it for Edina. In the neutral zone, the Crimson gained control. Maple Grove will play it down into the corner. That was Lanau. Back to get it is worst for Edina. He goes for the long pass up ahead, and he connected with Fetchko. But a nice job defensively by the Crimson. Then a second attempt there by Dallas. Fetchko found him, but didn't give up on the play. Now this is Howard. Oh, Howard gets taken down, but they're going to say... That will be a penalty, you bet. It was a penalty. They're going to call it a trip on Clayton Fisher. Or yeah. Excuse me, it's Chayton Fisher. Yeah. Well, let's take a look. Maple Grove generated some offense the last couple of shifts. It was a nice play right there. A nice stick check and got the puck back. Got a shot, and then they moved it out. But you can see here, and I like the fact they're shooting. They're not messing around. Get the puck on net somehow. Probably went a little lower. And then created another issue, another problem for the Hornets right there. But this, that's a trip. That stick got him good. And the Dinah's on the power play. 
take our first look at the Edina Hornets power play here tonight. Up one and nothing. Last year they were clicking only at an 11.4% rate. Coach Giles is hoping to get that back up to where it should be around the 25 to 30 percent ratio. Kind of a different year for Edina last year. They had trouble scoring. Yeah, Edina was not. Uh, you look at all those players playing college hockey that left the Edina program. They, they, uh, they definitely have the uh, talent and ability to reload. But of course, when you're playing in the tough conference that they play in, oh. and then in the section, it's no. There's not really time to have a down year. You can be pretty good and still have a record that does not indicate as much because the hockey was so good in their conference the last couple of years. Well, the other problem you got, too, is nobody cares if the dentist having a bad year. They just <laughs> want to beat a diner, you know? And when you've been good for so many years, that's what happens. You've got a target on your back. And, of course, they've stood up to that little deal for quite a few years quite well. But the doll line comes out here now on the power play after the first 45 seconds yielded nothing for the Hornets couple shots on goal two shots so far in this power play unofficially the shots on the scoreboard has it at five to five Dahl will, Dahl will take the face off once again for Edina it's won by the Crimson and Maple Grove is able to play it up and out of the zone struggling behind his own net there was Henry Whitmer he gains control now and here comes Dexheimer brought into the zone, has it knocked out of the zone. Dahl will chase it down. Good hustle there from the Crimson. Penalty kill disrupted that play a little bit. And now Maple Grove is able to dump it back down. So Edina's power play not exactly clicking the first minute and 20 seconds into it. They've really been disrupted. They cannot get it established inside the zone. Hornets will toss it into the zone, race for the puck there on the far side. Edina does gain control. They play it back to the point. Trying to walk into the slot there was Fetchko. Fetchko plays it back down low. And uh, Toby Hopp will use this opportunity to cover up and give his team a little break, get a whistle. Edina will make a line change. I like the fact Hopp, he's uh, stopping the puck quite a bit and just giving his guys a uh, little rest. I think it helped him recover it after Edina jumped all over in the first two, two and a half minutes of the period. Willie Johnson plays the puck back to the point off the one faceoff. Oh, walking in there was Wyatt Worst, and I want to say Hop got a piece of that one. I don't think he just missed high. I think Worst actually got a little bit of his either blocker or stick on that one that was tracking towards the upper corner. Yeah, we get another chance to see it here, but it's a good opportunity. That's the best opportunity the Hornets have had. You see the shot here? I don't know. I don't know. I can't tell. tell. It did, did, did not look like a deflection there, the way the puck stayed no. on the same trajectory, so I might have been seeing things. And officially, they did not give him a shot on goal there, so. Dinah now, power play complete. They're 0 for 1. Crimson kill off the first one of the night. And it was a tough penalty to take, too, because they were slowing down arguably the best player on the other side. And so it was a good physical play, but they got called for the tripping. If they didn't trip him, I don't know what Howard was about to do. Maple Grove will try to play the puck into the Dinah zone. It's held up there by Keenan Morgan. His pass too far from the neutral zone. And the Crimson now control. They'll bounce the puck off the boards, and then Dinah plays it out of play. It's Keaton Fritz who trying to dump it in, put it in the Maple Grove bench. And what happened to my extended plexiglass there, Doug? On it. Both teams excited to kick things off here. They're all standing on the bench. They're into the game for sure. This has just been a pretty good first period. Lots of speed, lots of talented hockey players out there. You know, when you look at these two programs, what's really changed about high school hockey over the last 20 years is just how much more hockey that these guys are able to play in the fall. This is, there's no rust to knock off. These guys have been playing lots of hockey between the high school elite league, uh, the different programs that get you ready for the season. Yeah. Uh, not like it was 20 years ago where you actually uh, took some time off and came back out and this would be your first game in quite some time. But that's what they, that's what the high school league wisely did to let these players play enough hockey so we don't have a mass exodus to junior hockey and exactly other, other things these kids are able to play top-notch high school hockey and play a lot of good hockey in the fall as well well i mean it wasn't even that big a change you know joe they they like playing high school hockey in minnesota these kids want to stay here and play but if you're not going to get enough time and experience throughout the course of the season it's awful hard to turn it down well you go from bantam hockey where these guys are playing 60 games a year to high school season where you're getting you know just about the upper 20s by the time the season's over upper yeah. 20s 
into 30. And so that's why the fall season becomes so important for these kids as well. The one thing I like about both these clubs too, in fact, all the clubs in this tournament, there ain't no weak sisters on those schedules, boy. They're playing, they will play everybody in the top 10, probably top 15. They have dynamite schedules and they are tested every game. Edina had a nice little rush to the neutral zone, but an errant pass got intercepted by the Crimson. Now it's Edina back with it. John Halverson brought it into the uh, zone. Oh. There's Halverson on the dot. Oh, and he just missed wide trying to pick his corner. Held in at the point there by Worst. Worst will try to get it down into the corner. It goes behind the Crimson net now. And that's Margano who tries to break it out, but he's being forechecked hard by Fetchko. Margano with a second chance now does get it up and out of the zone. As Crimson come down, it's Lucas Bush. Bush around the outside. Little backhand saucer in front. Nobody home for the Crimson. Margano shot hits traffic in front. And then fanning on it on a good look was Finn Brink. Held in at the point by Margano. Toad eggs one Hornet player, then keeps possession of it by finding Bush. Bush will dump it back into the corner. Now at the point, walking it as Wenty. He fired wide. Excellent, excellent puck movement here. They have Maple Grove just got a change. Maple Grove able to kind of, they were able to intermittently get line changes one or two at a time, and they kept possession the entire time. Now it's Geese, throws it towards the net, hit traffic in front. It was Kerman that might have blocked his own teammate's shot. Now Kerman still continuing. What a pass oh. right there to Geese. Geese just missed high and wide. I hate that. Hit the net. Hit the net. How are you going to score if you can't hit the net? Yeah, they're trying to be, trying to pick their corners. Yeah. Now it's Jaglo back to get it for Maple Grove as the puck got knocked out of the zone. Medina regains possession. Neavers with it. He gets the red line and tosses it in. 2.42 to go here in period number one. It's Edina one, Maple Grove nothing. Edina scored on the second shift of the game. Otherwise, it's been a pretty even game since then. It's gone fast, too. We've, we've, this has have been a very fast-paced game. Time has gone quickly. It hasn't dragged at all. It's been back and forth, up and down. Just what we expected from two of the top five or top five teams in the, in the state. Top well, ten. This tournament always has an incredible field of teams, and it's always pretty consistent with YZ, Maple Grove, and, and uh, uh, Edina. Edina, excuse me, yeah, yeah. Blake and the one that I'm watching. Edina, and they usually find a 14. It was Holy Family a few times. It's been Grand Rapids. It's been Elk River. They found a great replacement in Moorhead because Moorhead's really good, and they're going to be good for a long time. Oh, great scoring chance right there. Awesome opportunity there. Clayton Fisher just missed wide as he one-timed it. Oh, Edina's going to get too many men. They had a bad line change there. The puck ended up right in front of their bench. It's bad timing on the line change where the puck ends up there, but you got to let it go and you can't play it if you're one of those players that are in the middle of a change. So Edina's going to get the gate. We'll see the Maple Grove power play for the first time on a too many men on the ice call. This is a big break. This is a big break for Maple Grove right now. You don't expect something like that to happen, but you said Joe too. That becomes a very confusing situation when that puck is over there by that bench and you're trying to make a change, so. I really like when the referee tries to let it go, if, unless it's giving the team some kind of advantage, and it kind of was there a little yep. bit, because the puck would have ended up in the zone. Yep. It was kind of a dump in, they should have let it go, and then at least they would have, uh, Maple Grove would have been able to apply some pressure. If the puck hits a guy's skate, I always hate when that gets called, when a kid's like not looking, oh, trying yeah. to get on the bench and it hits his skate. That's a little silly. They actually played the puck there and kept it from going deep in the zone. So I well, agree with the call. This is going to hurt, man. Trey Fetchko is one of his main players for the Hornets right now. Uh, I think he assisted on the first goal and uh, made a nice pass. So he's in the box, and Maple Grove gets their first power play of the year. They were murderous last year, Joe, in the power play. 38%. You just don't see numbers like that. I don't think they'll get there this year. Yeah, they don't have Kyle Kukin and Sam Jacobs or Henry Nelson this year. Puck gets dumped out of the zone there. Edina clears it for the first time. And Margano will go back to get it for the Crimson. He's kind of settling things down a little bit. Finds Gunderson with some speed to the neutral zone. Gunderson around the outside. Up at the top now, tries to play it back to the near side for Brink. Scooped up there. They tried to find Margano at the point. That 
Pass got intercepted. Now Margano holds it in with the skates. Plays it down low to Gunderson. Gunderson plays it behind the net. Dinah's going to win the race to it, though, but Crimson have two guys on the puck, but Hornets win the battle. Nice job clearing it out there by A.J. Dahl. Doing it on both sides of the ice so far for the Hornets here in this game. You see how fast Mabel Grove gets back in the zone? I mean, the, the Leaves really do a nice job of just getting right back in there. Not worried about it got thrown out. Nelson with it on the wall. Back down low to Gunderson. Gunderson tried to go behind his back for Daniel Nelson and just missed. And that, and Diana intercepts and clears it all the way down. Ten seconds to go in the period. This power play will carry over just a little bit of it into the second period if the Crimson aren't able to score, which looks like that's going to be the case. They're going to let time expire here. So there you have it. The hockey season has started. We have one period in the book, and it did not disappoint. Lots of speed. <sighs> and we can take a deep breath. Edina leads Maple Grove 1-0. And uh, off the goal from A.J. Dole. We'll take a look at some of the action here in this first period. It was, it was good stuff. We're going to be back here in just a moment with Jay Wilcox and one of the coaches for these two talented teams. You're watching the Turkey Trot on CCX. CCX Media, your source for great local programming is now available on Roku and Apple TV. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including daily newscasts and full sporting events. To find the app, go to the store and search CCX and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. Now available on Roku and Apple TV. Edina head coach Kurt Giles joins us now here at the Turkey Trot Tournament with the Hornets leading Maple Grove 1 0 after 1. What was your impression of that first period for your team? Well, not bad, you know, kind of get our feet wet a little bit against a good team. So they got a big, strong team, so it's good for our kids to feel a little bit of pressure and feel it's like they're playing a real game. You got able to get one pretty early there. How much did that do for the kids' confidence and as far as getting into the game? Well, I think it always helps, you know, when you're playing against a good team like Maple Grove. It's nice to get ahead, get ahead early, but. You know, things change quickly in this game, and we've got to stay on, stay on the forecheck, stay, keep putting the puck behind them as much as possible. Tell us a little bit about the makeup of this year's team for the Hornets. How much do you have back from last year, and what's kind of the overall outlook for you? You know, that's a good question. We'll figure that out here in the next month or so. You know, we've got some decent kids returning for us, good goaltender and some defensemen, but you know how that works. You know, you find out what that looks like in the next month, uh, six weeks, then we'll figure it out from there. This tournament, I think, as much as ever, has four really good teams in it, and you're going to get good games both nights. You know, do you, do you view this as a good way to step into the season, just sort of see what the kids have and how they react to crowds and all of that kind of thing, too? I think that's a good barometer for any team that's in this group here because they're four really good hockey teams. Uh, they play very, very good hockey. They're well coached. They're disciplined. They're physical. So it's a, it's a, it's a big thing for us to come in here and get a feel for where we're at. Kurt, thanks so much for joining us. Great to see you again. We missed this tournament last year. Bet. Great to see you guys, too. All right, Kurt Giles, the head coach for Edina, his team leading it by a score of 1-0 here after the first period in our first game of the 2021 Turkey Trot Tournament here at Plymouth Ice Center. We'll take a quick break and then come back with more of our first intermission. Hey world, I have a quick message. It's about safe driving. All right, let's go. Anytime you're driving, have the seatbelt buckle tight, both hands on the wheel and your phone out of sight. When not in your hand trying to text somebody back because if you do, your car might get smacked. The moral of the story, just put your phone down. The people on the road will stay safe and sound. Put your phone down, put your phone down. People on the road will stay safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back here to Plymouth Ice Center and the 2021 Turkey Trot Boys Hockey Tournament hosted by the Wyzetta Trojans. And we're in our first intermission of the first game. It's Edina leading Maple Grove by a score of one to nothing. And an old friend of ours who's kind of traded in Minnesota winners for the Sunshine State in Florida, Garrett Strote, former Osseo player and coach, and uh, now working in the, at the junior level in Tampa, Florida. Tell us a little bit about your team and the program down there, Garrett. 
Yeah, no, it's great to be back here. It's kind of my annual event to come back and uh, come back for Thanksgiving and, and catch the games here and that. But yeah, I've been down in Tampa now eight years and coach a tier three team. So we're, we're our players are trying to develop to move up to either tier two or play NCAA Division three college. And uh, this year I got 10, 10 uh, Minnesota kids down there. Uh, we usually average anywhere from six to 10 players and uh, uh, they love it obviously. They're out golfing in the middle of the winter and stuff, but uh, it, it, we have a great setup where we're at and love it. And uh, you know, so it's, uh, I miss high school hockey, but I don't miss the winters. <laughs> Fair to say that you get a chance to look at Minnesota hockey still quite a bit down there, just because obviously we produce a lot of players that at all levels of the sport. Yeah, yeah. Well, Minnesota. I mean, there's a reason why they have the most players in college hockey, most players in the NHL. Uh, my dad does a lot of scouting for us, so our main contacts are still here in Minnesota. That's why we get so many. I was just talking to Kurt for a little bit there, knowing him for years, and and uh, all the other high school coaches that I've known. So we have a lot of good contacts and uh, that's kind of why this is kind of our main base for recruiting. Even though we're down in Florida, uh, we got something different to offer them because I know they have a lot of options up here, but we have a lot of different things to offer them and with our training and that and, uh, and the guys that come down there love it. It's been pretty successful with them. How different is coaching at that level as compared to high school? Uh, you got, in high school, you know, you can have some players that don't really want to keep playing after this, you know, so uh, down there, it, it, it's it's a longer season. We've already played 22 games. We basically got a high school season. So the players that are playing at that level, you got to be dedicated. Otherwise, you know, for a season that goes, you know, seven eight months long. So you got players that they really want to try to go up to the next level. So you probably got you know more of a core of guys that are really dedicated to go up. I know you've still got a, a little bit of ties to the Osseo Maple Grove program. What was your assessment of that first period there for the, the Crimson Varsity? Yeah, at that well, obviously, you know two of the top teams in the state, but uh, uh, yeah, Maple Grove looks good. They're moving a the puck. They make some nice plays in the puck, and they got some size up front. And I was like, wow, they got some big kids for, for a high school team. But uh, and you can see Dinah's, uh, looks like one of their younger teams they've had. But I like how uh, they both, both teams move the puck really well. The players, you can tell both teams got a lot of guys with good skill. Garrett, always great to see you and enjoy your weekend here at the uh, Thanksgiving time back at home in Minnesota. Hey, Jay, nice to see you guys again. I got to do a shout out to Dan Ficken. Coach's son Kyle for years. I see he's still doing it. And, uh, just want to give him a little shout out too. All right, Garrett, thanks so much and good luck. All right, thank you. Garrett Strode coaching down in Tampa Bay Juniors now and a former Osseo High School coach and player and uh, one of the guys that we've enjoyed working with over all these years here at CCX. We'll be back with more of our live coverage of game one of the Turkey Trot at Cedina leading Maple Grove 1 0. Honey, what I think you need is a socket wrench. I played JV basketball. I'm sorry. I don't think it looks right. This is good, and it's all is good, it, baby. Is it really all good? If you love me enough to routinely test your handyman skills, not to mention the strength of your marriage, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. I'm going to call my dad. Welcome back to the Plymouth Ice Center. The Dinah Hornets leading the Maple Grove Crimson by the score of one nothing in the first intermission. And Edina got after it. The first couple of shifts, they were the ones that felt more comfortable and got the puck into the Maple Grove zone. A lot of play in the Maple Grove zone for the first couple of shifts of this game. And this was one of the plays right here. Nice feed up front by Trey Fetchko. He feeds AJ Dahl and Dahl on his second attempt, able to get one past Toby Hopp. I think the Crimson woke up a little bit at that point. Now they started creating some scoring chances, as you see uh, a, a good one right here. Missing the net, but a good look for the Crimson there from Chayton Fisher. And then a couple shots from the outside. I will say Maple Grove leads in eight to five in shots. We have the uh, scoring chances at even three to three because yeah. that right there was a quality scoring chance for Maple Grove, but a lot of their shots did come from the outside. In their, in their zone possession. And then they also missed the net a lot. Yes. That's, that's one of the things that happened. That was a pretty good look right there uh, off the stick of Lucas Bush. And then this was a great chance. Uh, just Again, just missing wide. So Fisher misses the net there. So shots on goal led by Maple Grove, but then shots that missed the net also led by Maple Grove. They had four or five quality shots that did not hit the net. So scoring chances tied up three apiece. Penalties so far 0 for 1. Uh, it looks like for Edina's power play, Maple Grove has 14 seconds left in there first power play opportunity of the evening and we'll see how that plays out here to begin the second period but 
Very even opening period here between the Crimson and the Hornets. And we'll come back for a second period action here from Plymouth. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button and from there choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Back here in Plymouth at the Ice Center, Edina leading 1-0 over the Crimson. The players getting stretched out to begin this second period. And you're looking at A.J. Dahl, who won goal at the 104 mark of the first period. But impressive stuff from that line altogether. They looked good offensively. And then you saw when they were on the penalty kill, it was Dahl who uh, played a pretty prominent role in that penalty kill as well. Yeah, he does a nice job. He knows good positioning. He knows where to be. Like I said, he didn't go behind the net. He stayed out in front where he could work with it. And uh, working with new line or with his line mates, uh, scored with a minute four gone in the first period. So they got on it right away, and they continued to pressure throughout that period. We were talking uh, during the break offline a little bit about the, uh, the, well, the coaching that the quality of high school coaching that we have in the state right now. And Berglund building that up with Maple Grove. Giles has been such a, a force in Edina, a steady force when you know that there's probably been years where parents can antsy when things aren't going their way. And you're going to have uh, uh, situations where parents try to use their power to get rid of coaches. You saw that happen with Coach Randolph. You've heard other coaches complain about it. There's some of these programs that does not happen. I mean, yep. they are steady. Lee Smith at Eden Prairie, uh, Lechner at Hill Murray. It, some of these quality coaches, you're, you're dumb if you move off and move away from them after just a, year, a bad year or two. Stick with them, they'll come back around. I mean, Every one of these coaches in this tournament have excellent credentials. They're in the top ten as coaches in the state. That's right. We're going to see that. And Coach O'Leary at Wyzetta coming up next. And what a great job he did as, you know, he jumped into it at a very young age and has just been awesome for the game of hockey in Wyzetta. Uh -huh. They're lucky to have him in Wyzetta. All right. Both teams at full strength now. Maple Grove and Edina both 0 for 1 on the power play so far as... Howard has it for Edina. Howard at the top of the circles from the slot shot. Good stick there by Maple Grove, blocking that one up and out of play. It looked like it was Fisher who got a stick on that one. One programming note, folks, wants you to know that if Moorhead now wins the game tonight and they're in the championship game, the championship game will be tomorrow, Saturday at 5 p.m. Uh, we do the tournament's doing that to allow them to get home tomorrow night before Sunday. So, if Moorhead wins tonight, it will be a championship game at five o'clock rather than seven o'clock tomorrow night. Just so you're aware. Now, how many tournaments are that accommodating, huh? Ah, oh, they're just a bunch of spud lovers down here. <laughs> All right, Maple Grove getting the puck up and out of the zone. Here come the Crimson across the neutral zone. It's Blake Steenerson. Dumps it in. Cedarson, a 6'4", 200-pound junior forward for Maple Grove. Talked about the size of Maple Grove. He's the biggest one out there. Crimson are down a couple players. You heard Dan mention it. There's kind of a, a decent-sized football game here tonight in Maple Grove. Land. Of some they're, importance. They're playing for the, the state championship <laughs> here in just about an hour or so. And uh, we want to wish our best of luck to Maple Grove, but more specifically to Jack Jacobson, the son of John Jacobson. That's why John's not with us here today. He's trying to go watch his kid play on the on, the, on, on the big field and uh, win a state championship. Yep. How about that? So big night for Maple Grove Athletics all around. Be their first football state championship if they win. Here we go. Oh. From the behind the goal, oh, that my. one found its way in. I think it might be Jack Kernan, but we'll take a look. It's either Kernan or the other player who was with him, and it might be Nathan Jago. It looks like it's Nathan Jago. But both players, they had a nice little rush. It was denied at first by Klarkowski. The puck ended up behind the goal, but Jago and Kernan persistent. See the, see the puck kind of weirdly bounces off Kernan, then Jago throws it off the goaltender and into the zone, or into the net rather. Klarkowski just did not have his post covered. 
Weird play. Kernan loses it. Then Jaglo backhands oh. it off Karkowski into the goal. And it might went up, might have went off an Edina defender as well. But well, he didn't stay tight. He relaxed and he didn't go guard that short post. If he would have, he could have stopped that. Wow. Well, there you have it. One to one now. Maple Grove getting after it, scoring from a weird angle. And it was Edina who scored just over a minute into the first period. Now Maple Grove answers the call but a whole period later, just two minutes into the second period. Jaglo from Kernan. Well, there's times you'd rather be lucky than good, but the smart thing is they got the puck back out in front of the net, got it in tight, and just got a break. Shot on goal from Edina. And he's putting some pressure on his kid and Fritz. Now the puck gets sent out of the zone. This will be icing on the Crimson. In high school hockey, you can ice it and yes, still get can. that line change, so that's not a bad play when you're tired. Get off the ice, so. Take a look at one of the physical plays here in the second period. Finishing his check was Riley Spindler. Now, this is the first night of opening night of high school hockey. There's a lot of talk right now at the Bantam level, uh, inconsistency among officials of whether you can finish your check or not. There's been a lot of interference yep. calls for hits just like that. I'm happy to see that one got let go. Yep. It wasn't a vicious hit, just finishing his check. Pass out front, intercepted there by Landon Gunderson. Gunderson flips it to the line, but not out. And a scoring chance and a goal! Guess who? Jimmy Clark Guess intercepts who? the clearing attempt from Gunderson. And Clark, unassisted, walks down the slot, banks it off the pipe and in. And Jimmy Clark, the future gopher and junior sensation, is on the scoreboard here, making it 2-1 to one Edina. Boy, why, how did they put the puck there? I mean, how did they not know he was there? What a great play, but oh my gosh. Watch the puck. Throws it into the middle. And I know he lofted it, but don't do that, son. That's not a good play. And of course, dropped right on the stick of the leading scorer for the Hornets. And Mr. Clark killed it. Break away. Here comes a chance the other way for Maple Grove to the backhand. And he had it poked off his stick before he could get it to the backhand. A follow-up, a chance, and a shot on goal there from Gunderson. On the breakaway was Chayton Fisher. Fisher went to his backhand, and I think he lost it before he completed the move. That wasn't a flurry. That was a tidal wave. Oh, my gosh. There had to be four opportunities there, Joe. Clark with it on the wall. Margano, good pinch, held it in for a moment. Then it's the Hornets clearing it out. Rolling puck has some legs, but back to get it is Wente. He turns it over. Now backdoor feed. That went off a of skating on goal. Hop kicks it to the corner, and Wente scoops it up to Gunderson. Gunderson across into the Dyna zone, gets checked effectively off the puck there on a nice back check from the Hornets. Now a tripping penalty there coming up on Edina. It's going to be Henry Whitleff to get in the gate once the Hornets touch the puck. Maple Grove has the extra attacker on. They're going to try to keep possession of the puck and see if they can get a scoring chance. Into the zone He's comes in. Brink. Oh. Brink looking to center to Margano. Now a shot right on. Rebound in front. It's finally handled by Edina and will the stoppage of play and that penalty will now eventually be called tripping coming up here on Henry Whitmuth, the defenseman senior for Edina. Watch Klarkowski here, the Edina goalie and what happens. Nice play here moving forward. Got it right in between the legs. Trip taken down there, good move. Then they went to work. Klarkowski looks a little uncomfortable. He's, he's been a little shaky there as we saw in that one by the short post there earlier. I'm wondering if this might be an opportunity here. Maple Grove's second attempt on the power play here. We've got Parker Wente up top in this umbrella power play. Play down to the corner. Edina, oh, Manning. Maple Grove in the corner there. Bad play by Maple Grove. Shouldn't have more players from the penalty killing side winning a puck battle down there. Crimson, 30 seconds into the second power play. Here they come. Wente up through the neutral zone. Chips it into the corner. Molman wins the race for Edina. He rings it around the board, but it's stopped right there by Steenerson. Oh, fanning on that pass attempt. Ooh. Maple Grove kept it in. Wente kept it in for a moment, but now unable to keep it in was Jaglo. And the puck will come all the way down. Hop will settle it down for Wente. Wente to Jaglo with some speed to Gunderson. His pass gets deflected off a of skate. And out the other way comes Willie Johnson. Johnson looking for some help on the PK. Puck gets played out 
in the center now, and it's picked up there by Kernan. A mistake made. The, the, the Maple Grove Crimson had an opening right across that blue line to make a play, but they hesitated, and uh, they went back in their zone. Nelson with a great pass. There it's Gunderson! Landon Gunderson goes top shelf, ties it up 2-2. Two to two. You're going to see a beautiful pass here. It's Wenty who goes across the, or sorry, Nelson goes across the zone, but someone, I got to figure out which forward it was here. He, he did just a little tip pass through his yep. legs, and it caught the defense a little bit off guard, and Gunderson gets his first of the year. Look at this little pass right here. Subtle little play. What a pass, though. The pick up for that was 15, Jack Kernan. Kernan gets the, sec the assist, so it'll be Kernan and Nelson on the assist. And on the goal, it's Landon Gunderson. He sniped it too, by gosh. He went up or right on the glove side and beat him clean. Lanau sneaking down. Now a shot right on! What a recovery there by Klarkowski. He made back-to-back -back great saves. Well, that power play may have reinvigorated Maple Grove here because all of a sudden they're turning us into a hurricane game, and they're the hurricane. There's another shot. A lot of chances out of Chayton Fisher. He's been all over the place here today. He's missed the net a few times, but, man, did he see that one well. He pounded that slap shot right on. I think Klarkowski made the save of the night so far. Yeah, I would here agree, Here comes Fisher again. Now Fisher drops it there for Gunderson, gets it, tries to get it back. Nice little give-and-go play right there. Gunderson... Cycles it back down low. Fisher kind of out of gas right now. He needs to get to the bench. He got tripped down. Might have, might have been able to draw a penalty, but they didn't call it. A little game of catch up there along the slot. Now Jago gets checked off the puck. Trickling puck in the slot. Shot right on there. Oh, yeah. And a rebound. It's Kernan. What a shift he just had. Wow. He got the Tremendous. assist. And then he gets the goal. He just kept coming and coming and coming at in front of the net and hacking away, and all of a sudden we found a little wood there and put it away. Well, Crimson are fired up right now. I know they're not bees or insects of any sort, but they're buzzing right now. They are <laughs> They are buzzing. No question. Jack Kernan. Jack Kernan with already a goal and assist in the second period. They're taking a look. He gets the shot on and then follows up his rebound. You love it. You know, and that's kind of what I was looking at with, with Klarkowski there. He's been losing his rebounds. He's lost control of a number of them lately. And, boy, that was a big one to lose right there. Yeah, he just could not find that where that puck went. Now we have a trip coming up on Idina. The Hornets are reeling a little bit. And we got a tripping call coming up. I believe it's going to be on 15. That's Kaden Fritz. Fritz. And it's a, you know, a tripping penalty 180 feet from your own net is not a good penalty usually. Yeah, and that's a senior right there. That, that's a mistake they shouldn't make. So but you're trying to struggle to get back, and you're working hard, and I get it. Yeah. But you know that, they'll call that every time, Joe. Well, and he didn't have to make that play, right? I mean, no, he so did. Far, so far from your goal, and you, you had a decent forecheck set up. You had a second attacker coming over. Oh, you got plenty of time to pinch him off on the boards before he got out of the zone. Maple Grove now on the power play. It's Margano up top this time. Shot right on from the sophomore Nelson. Klarkowski was able to make that save, did not leave his post. And then Nelson's second attempt right there gets deflected out of play. Good stick by Dexheimer, the defenseman for Edina. So 17 seconds into the third power play attempt of the game for Edina, or for Maple Grove, rather. They are one for two now. Maple Grove enjoying its first lead of the game, and they deserve it. They've really been the better team here in the second period. They're showing a lot of grit. A lot of their, their goals have been scored because of hard work. They've really done a good job this period of not letting Adina jump all over them. They're going to jump all over Adina, and that's the Maple Grove hockey team that we usually see from. Nelson tried to find Finn Brink going down the back door. Now he gets it back. Margano takes a look. His shot just misses wide. Gunderson was going to try the wraparound, and he got met there at the post with some defense from Edina. The referee quickly blew his whistle. It must be a, a net situation, I believe. Oh, fix the net here. One twenty to go on the power play for Maple Grove, trying to extend its 3-2 lead. Well, scoring Edina 3-1 here in the second period. 
Gunderson gets kicked out of the circle. Nelson will come in and replace him. And it's cleared all the way out of the zone by Edina. Luke Margano back to get it. He's got a little bit more pressure than he expected there from Vandervolt. And then Vandervolt takes oh. it down. Well, Vandervolt thinks he has a scoring chance, but he's going to get called Leo, for penalty. <laughs> Boy, the uncontrolled sticks here, the reaching, the lack of skating, tripping calls and slash calls like that generally indicates someone is not moving their foot. You can see there he isn't moving his foot at all, trying to skate back into the angle to get in front of the player. He just reaches out with the stick. And that, you know, it's, it's easy to do because you think you can get it. Oh, well, I, I'd play anyways because usually you just don't put that much pressure on the puck no. down there. You kind of let, you know, let Margano take his time and kill off some of the minutes himself. But uh, he, he wanted to apply some pressure and he was doing a good job until he got a stick there, as you said, in the skates of Margano. So five on three for a minute here. Let's see if the Crimson can extend the lead. Nelson plays it back down low to Brink. Brink gives it back to Nelson. Nelson walks right in and fires it over the net. He's like, you're going to give me this shot. Hit I'm going to try. Net. Hit the net, young man. Now Margano to Gunderson. Back to Margano. Nelson for the one-timer. Just missed wide. And that one's a breakout for Edina. So that one's... Another one of my pet peeves, Joe. You got a power play. You got the extra man. Hit the net. Make the goalie work. If he even gives up a rebound, you got enough guys. You outnumber the other team. Hit the net. Here comes Kernan to Margano. Margano for Gunderson for a one-timer. And Klarkowski made the save, but didn't. Ooh. Th thought he had it. Yeah. And the rebound went behind the goal. I think they have a grove smoke blood on this goal. Oh, right there was a chance right there. Kernan fanned on it, and then Nelson got it. And Klarkowski makes a big save. Now the fight. There's a goal. There you go. Oh, was this that one. pretty? Oh, was that pretty? Backdoor play, a little far raised, but boy, that shot came back right on the money. Finn Brink gets the one-timer on the power play. Edina was not five on three at the time, so nope. they will now be at even strength. Maple Grove will move to two for four on the power play, and now they lead four to two. And you, you gotta wonder if you're Coach Giles, are you gonna see this thing through? Or do you possibly use a timeout? I don't think you need to use a timeout. You're back to five on five, but it just seems like Maple Grove has kind of grabbed a hold of this game here in the second period. Only two goal deficit for Edina, and there goes the timeout right there. Coach Giles will use the timeout. Edina will slow things down here, but it's been all Maple Grove here in period number two. You feel like Kurt Giles now? You called that pretty good, Joe. <laughs> I like that. My God, man, yeah, now he's, he's having a little words here. Look at the experience, though. I mean, how many coaches across the state would be red in the face, yelling and screaming at their players? Here he is. He knows it's game one. It's about how you're playing in February and March, not how you're playing in November. He's going to just talk calmly to his players right now and be like, hey, boys, we're getting killed. Here's some things we got to do. I, you know what? I don't think Kurt ever raises <laughs> his way. He's one of the nicest guys ever. But look at the intensity in that man's eyes. You don't get to play in the NHL for as long as he did at his size without having some major intensity. And just done a marvelous job with the Hornets. They always come out. They're ready to play. They're in the contention for number one in the state pretty much every year. Guy knows what he's doing. And the other man on the other side. Boy, what a godsend from Maple Grove. He's really picked that program up, and he took it to the next level. Nice guy out of Chief River Falls there, you know. Yep. Oh, jeez. Well, the biggest challenge for Maple Grove for a long time, and this is just, you know, my amateur opinion from the outside, was they would have tons of good hockey players, but nobody believed they could, they could go to Maple Grove and then go still make it to the next level and go on. Everyone was always leaving the program early. If you were talented, you know, going to the USHL or development program or whatever have you, Maple Grove is stuck around now. Some of these top players are sticking around and they're getting their Division I scholarships and yet still trying to get Maple Grove to the state tournament. They used to be a pretty rough team, too. They spent a lot of time in the box, and I remember a number of games they gave away just by really not smart penalties, and, and Coach Berglund has really taken that out of the program. They're very aggressive and they're physical, but they, they don't take penalties at the wrong time, and they're well-schooled and disciplined as far as they don't make a whole lot of mistakes. Seven minutes to go in period number two, four to two, Maple Grove over Edina as the Hornets play the puck into the middle right there. Defensively stopped by the Crimson. Now a shot and a glove save made by Toby Hopp, who we have not called his name more than just a time or two in the second period. There, you get a good look at him, folks. You haven't seen much of him this period. Big goaltender, got big shoes to fill. Jack Wenicke used to fill that spot for three years, and he was some kind of goalie. 
But Coach Berglund's got a lot of confidence in this young man. He says it's his turn, and then he'll be able to handle it. You're going to have a whole different schedule for Maple Grove last year. That's the one thing what COVID did to them more than anybody else. Oh. They weren't able to get as many uh, you know, non-conference games scheduled, and their conference was kind of down. The Northwestern Rumor Conference wasn't as strong as usual. Nope. Centennial and Blaine weren't all that good. Uh, you know, Tino Grace was okay. Rogers was a little bit better than average. But it was an Andover, and after that, it was nobody else. Yep. So Maple Grove didn't get to have that juggernaut schedule that they have this year to get them ready for the state tournament. Puck gets played out of the zone. Crimson dump it off the boards. As Maple Grove lost in the semifinals in their best state tournament appearance ever last year. Lost in the crazy game to Eden Prairie. One-timer there from Fisher. Boy, he, is, he has had some shots in the slot area. That might have been his fifth or sixth attempt where he's taking a shot between the two circles. I like the fact you're shooting. I want to make sure they, they hit the net. So that, that really bothers me a lot when I see that from players. I know you're trying to thread the needle. I know you're trying to find a corner. But instead of making a mistake on a slice, make it as a fade. <laughs> or instead of a hook, make it a little draw. You know, and... Uh, but I, both these teams, both these teams now have, have traditional powers in the state. They always have a great battle when they get together. And it's fun to do their games. I mean, this is good hockey, Joe. Absolutely. Steenerson keeps the puck in for Maple Grove, tosses it in the corner. Edina rings it around. Howard waiting for it on the wall. Plays it nicely up ahead to Dahl. Here comes Dahl with some speed into the zone. Has Fetchko streaking down the right side. Puts a weak backhand on goal. And able to cover it up was Hop. In that play right there, you're on your backhand, so it's a tough play. But what you want is you want a rebound to go. You want to go far side so the rebound kicks out to that Fetchko who was set up in front. Yep, exactly. Now we'll see if this line can do their magic again. The Clark line. Fetchko and Dahl with him. Keaton. Jack Kernan will take the draw from Maple Grove against this top line. Kernan. Loses it right there. Ooh. Here comes Fetchko looking to center. Finds Howard. Howard couldn't get on that one very well. Dahl with a chance in front. And a save made there by Hop. And Maple Grove will toss the puck out to the neutral zone. Edina dumps it right back in. They'll continue on the four check now. Is back to get it as Wenty. He rings it around to the near side. Jaglo is able to get the puck up to the neutral zone. But Edina regains control. It's Howard. Howard. Gets to his forehand, his shot hits traffic in front. Bouncing puck there, handled by Kernan. And now Edina bounces it off the referee. That almost jumped right out into the slot. Shot from the point, misses wide there. Race for the puck on the wall. Edina and the Maple Grove tying it up along the wall. Kernan trying to dig it free, he finally does. And he trickles one through the neutral zone. Back to get it as Molman. Molman, as Maple Grove tries to get the change. Oh, penalty coming up on Edina. But first, a two-on-one. Oh! oh! Great chance there from Jaron Geese. But couldn't get good lumber on that one. And it's a penalty coming up on Edina's Caden Morgan. He got his arms up around a crimson player. And he's going to get the gate. This isn't a bad penalty. This is not a bad penalty. Because that was a quick transition. Two-on-one. Look out. Here we're coming. You see Clark. He gets his arm kind of holds him up there. He goes to make the hit, but he kind of left left hand was up around the neck area of the Maple Grove player, holding all day long. So Edina gets the game for the fifth time. Here comes a shorthanded chance the other way, though. It's Matt Vandervolt. Shot right on, rebound out in front. And it's handled there by Nelson for Maple Grove. Nelson takes it behind his goal as they look to set up this power play. Two for four on the night so far for the Crimson. Centering feed right there, and there's a goal! Oh. What a beautiful feed! Gunderson sets up Finn Brink, and Brink gets his second one of the night. Second power play goal as well. Five to two, Maple Grove. Well, you don't see this happen too often, where Diana kind of loses it a little bit here, and uh, the penalties right now are hurting them badly. And they suddenly find a new star to make up some goals here in Finn Brink. Huh? How about that? What a nice play here. Uh, Brink's a right there. You can see it. Gunderson takes the defense wide. Brink right from that left dot. Hammers it home. He scored from the right dot earlier. This is the left side. Showing that he can do it on both sides. Uh, 
on the brink of a hat trick, huh? There, there's our word play. Oh, I like that's that, my, Joe. That's, that's my last one. That's okay. That's too much, but. I might have some rotten bananas show up on your email here in the next few days, <laughs> but what the heck. Interesting game here. It's, it, 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 it's amazing how Maple Grove is taking advantage like an experienced team does. Yeah, and most of their stars are gone, but the guys that came back play, have played in all these, you know, tournaments that they've been in as youth and all that. And they're playing like veterans right now. This is unbelievable. I, I don't know if we're going to have a camera on this. There's going to be a penalty coming up on Maple Grove. But I don't know what choice Aaron T Tallis had here. He had to take the penalty. The Trey Fetchko decided to mess with the goalie and just back into him and make contact with the goalie for about five to ten seconds. And uh, Tallis is trying to move him out of there. But at what point? Here, here, here's where it starts. Okay, take a look. All right, now he lets him go. He's like, yeah, I got to get you off my goalie somehow here, right? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's almost a forced penalty. He had to do something. And I think that was a pretty smart play by Fetchko. Might have, might have. Well, it could have been goaltend interference, too, which would have cost you. Yeah, and it probably should have been. He was pretty close to getting a penalty himself, but he was able to draw a penalty on Maple Grove. It might just be what the doctor ordered for Edina. So. Well, no coach will ever get mad at a defenseman for doing that. Uh, you, you take care of your goalie. You do what you have to do to keep him protected. Well, five to two, with Maple Grove leading here, and the Dyna with a chance to chip away at it on the power play. They played up around the boards to the point it goes now. You know, Dyna just hasn't found that intensity they had in the first two, three minutes, Joe. Wouldn't you agree? Yep, it just hasn't been there. It's been all they've been on their heels. I I watched uh, Coach Giles' lips as we were watching him coach in that timeout, and one. One sentence that I'm pretty sure I made <laughs> made out was stop watching the puck. So he, just, yes. he felt like his team was watching a little bit. You can kind of see it. Just stop watching the puck and join the play. Dexheimer scoops it up there for the Hornets on the far wall. Plays catch down low with Johnson. A shot right on. That might have hit the player in front or the goalie. I can't tell, but it was a shot from the sharp angle from Nevers. Well, we know it's early in the season. The power plays usually don't get going until about a month in, but, well, you got to take some shots, Adina. And they were setting it up fairly nice, but nobody wanted to take a shot. Here comes a shot right there. That one skipped over the stick of Nevers. Nevers had a great look upcoming if he would have been able to handle that puck clean. Fight for the puck there in the corner. Coming away with it is Nevers. Plays it back to the point. One timer from the far side, that one misses wide, that will be a breakout the opposite way as Wyatt Worst misses wide. Worst back to get his own shot, rebound. Plays it up ahead to Trey Fetchko. Fetchko loses it, trying to center it in the middle and the Crimson send it all the way down. 50, 150 into this power play. It looks like Maple Grove's gonna successfully kill off yet another penalty here. Doing something Dino was unable to do and that's Kill off some penalties here in the second period. Well, last year their penalty kill worked at an 86% rate and they're playing the penalty kill like that's what it's going to be here this season if they keep this up. They've done a really good job on the penalty kill, Joe, all the way through. Nobody's really gotten out of position. They protect the back line very nicely. I'd say a pretty significant minute and 20 seconds in this game coming up here. Edina, if they want to get back in this game, a goal here to finish off the second period would be a big step forward. Yeah, let's make it a two-goal game instead of a three-goal game. Right, let's just take it one step at a time. Prescott Sexton takes the draw for Edina against Landon Gunderson of the Crimson. Gunderson wins the draw. Puck gets scooted all the way around to the far side. Brink has it, and Brink's able to get it out. Here comes the Crimson, 2 on one Gunderson down the left side. Oh, oh that puck skipped under the stick of Steenerson. Great feed again by Gunderson, showing his passing ability here in this second period as well as his snipe. Morgan down the left side, puts it on goal, blocker save, bouncing rebound in the slot. Good physical play by Steenerson as he eliminated <laughs> Sexton from the play. We start calling him Caterpillar, man, because he's acting just like a bulldozer. Jeepers, that kid took him out of the play. Daniel's able to play the puck to the neutral zone, but Maple Grove, good defensive posture. They were back. 
Sienerson will scoop it up on the near wall. He chips it to center, takes a hit, and gets it out of the zone. Now Gunderson, one on four, circles around the neutral zone looking for nice some help. Play. Great play right there. Found them now, and Lanao got it deep into the zone. Up the wall. Dina not handling the puck very well here. Ten seconds to go. Shot gets blocked in front. Now it's scooped up. Dahl will throw in the corner. Fetchko goes after it. His backhand pass in front gets intercepted. And the puck gets played out of the zone as time expires here in period number two. What a tale of two periods. Ooh. First period, Edina led one to nothing. It was a pretty even period. Second period, can't be said. The same. Maple Grove outscores Edina in the second period. Five to one and completely dominates. Fear the leaf, man. The domination is coming down. My gosh, what a period for the Maple Grove Crimson. They really found themselves playing good, smart, fundamental hockey. They created some situations. Got some, if you want to call it garbage goals, got some good goals, but just thoroughly outplayed the Hornets in that period. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Jay Wilcox will be standing by with head coach Todd Bergman of Maple Grove and his Crimson who lead five to two after two. CCX Media, your source for great local programming is now available on Roku and Apple TV. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including daily newscasts and full sporting events. To find the app, go to the store and search CCX and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. Now available on Roku and Apple TV. Welcome back to Plymouth Ice Center. Quite a second period for the Maple Grove Crimson. They're now up on the Dyna 5-2 after a five-goal second. Todd Berglund, Maple Grove's coach, joins us. And you were just telling me the kids finally relaxed a little bit and started to play the way they could there. Yeah, it's. Uh, I told them uh, after the first period we had to relax and play our game. They were jittery, obviously. It's uh, been a while since we've been back at the turkey trot, but... Uh, yeah, they, they took it to heart and told them to go out and have fun, enjoy themselves, and, and work hard. But first and foremost, I want to congratulate our Crimson football team uh, and Coach Lamo on a fantastic season. Uh, we wish we could be there with you tonight, but uh, we'll be here to do our job, and we, we know you'll do your job. So I just want shout out to those guys. Yep. And you've got some guys in your program that are with the, the football team tonight. Obviously, I think some of the fans are over there, too. Yeah. But uh, but an exciting time for the school in general, I think, right? Yeah, it, uh, it certainly is. And uh, Coach Lombo's built a great culture with the football program. And we're, uh, we're trying to do the same. And... Uh, a lot of good things happening. Great community, Maple Grove, and good people. Uh, we missed the togas tonight, but uh, really good crowd. So, uh, <laughs> sorry my voice wasn't a little better here. <laughs> you guys are coming off really one of the best seasons in program history last year. You come into this year ranked number one. Does that put extra pressure on, or do you guys not think about that part of it? No, uh, you know, hats off to the guys last year for setting the stage for us, but we... We don't we don't think about the rankings at all. It's you know, again, it's hard not to notice them, but these guys come out, they do their job, and uh, they work their butts off. And I I, uh, I just can't speak highly enough to the compete that they have every day. So that's the that's the message we send. We work hard regardless if we're number 64 or number one. So um, we'll keep doing our job. Yeah. Last thing for you, Coach, now, how do you tell your guys, okay, two periods, but we haven't played three yet. There's one more to go here. Uh, let me see. Uh, Edina's never going to roll over, <laughs> I think, is the message. Uh, we know we know how good Kirk Giles does with that program, and, and we know how good they are. They're explosive, and we got to keep them to the outside, play good defense, because they're going to they're gonna come gunning. So we'll be ready. All right, thanks, Coach, and rest up the voice a little bit. All right, thanks, Jay. Appreciate it. <laughs> Todd Berglund, the Crimson head coach, his team now up 5-2 to two after two periods here. We'll have more of our second intermission in just a moment. Coming up here live on CCX.
Worried about your friend but don't know how to reach out? You can say how are you or get a fake tattoo. You can ask with an app if it works for you. You can chat with them in VR. It's so good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Welcome back here to the Turkey Trot, which is back after a one-year absence due to COVID last year. And Pat O'Leary, the Wyzetta head coach, joins us now. And Pat, you kind of play a double role this weekend, tournament host and also coach of the Trojans. You know, what's it like to, to get back into it and have Turkey Trot again here this year? Well, my goalie coach came in and sent a video of the line outside before the game. And <laughs> that's pretty amazing. So if you look around, I mean, this is a phenomenal. People are happy to be back in the building. Um, it's always had a good turnout for this tournament pre-COVID, and uh, you know now people are excited to be back, and we got four really good teams, so uh, you know it doesn't surprise me. Yeah, we talk about it every year that there's good competition, but I think maybe this year coming in at least the expectations for the four as a whole might be as high as ever. Yeah, I mean you know it's it's you know four of the programs that have been around for a while now, and. Uh, you know, put out a good product for the last five to six years. And, you know, three of them were in the state tournament last year. Um, so the fans know what to expect. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think all four of our teams can get up and down the ice fast, physical. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I'd, by the end of the year, I'd say all four of these guys are, will be tough to beat. You've got some returning guys, especially on the back end, it sounds like. But overall, how are you feeling about your group coming into tonight's opener? Yeah, I mean, I think there'll be some nerves, obviously, um, you know, looking around with the fans as well. And, um, you know, we got we got a young crew up front, but um, our decor returned quite a bit of guys. We got Will and back in that, which is always nice to start. Um, but, I, you know, I, you know, I watched the first period of that last game and you know, I talked to the coaches and kids are nervous, you know, and it's just uh, but the only way you learn is by doing it. So we're excited to get out there after this game. And uh, and, uh, you know, the kids are seeing the atmosphere right now, so they got to deal with it. And you only learn by doing as you come into this first game, what do you know about Moorhead? I mean, obviously they're a good team, but what, what are their strengths and what we have to counteract? Well, you know, I think they were very young last year. Um, you know, so when you're young one year and you return a bunch of guys, you got experience. Um, you know, I just know they're, they're so well coached and, um, you know, they, they got they to go a three good lines, six good D and a good goalie. So, you know, we just got to be ready to play. And, you know, the first period is going to be a feel out, I think, for both teams. Um, so that's going to be the message in our locker room. And, you know, hopefully that's just we're ready to go. Pat, thanks for joining us. We'll see you again in game two tonight, and good luck against Moorhead. Appreciate recovering the tournament. Thank you. All right, Pat O'Leary, the YZ boys hockey coach. They'll be up in game two at approximately seven or slightly later as they take on third-ranked Moorhead here in our second game of the first round here. More coverage of the turkey trot coming up. It's Maple Grove leading Edina 5-2 to two after two. If I could be you. You could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse, walk a mile in my shoes. Back at the Plymouth Ice Center. What a second period for the Maple Grove Crimson. Outscoring Edina 5-1 in that span. After trailing 1-0 after 1. It was all Maple Grove in the second period. It happened 5-on-5. Five five. It started. Maple Grove started out playing them 5-on-5. Five five. And then Edina, as they were kind of beginning to start to panic a little bit, that's when they started taking some penalties. But here was the first goal of the Crimson. It was kind of just hard work and a lucky bounce. Got Maple Grove on the board for the first time. That was Curtin with the goal. Bad turnover right here. That led to Edina goal. They then led two to one. That was Jimmy Clark scoring for the Hornets. Maple Grove bounced back though. This is a power play goal right here. Nice little pass between Curtin's legs. And uh, a great goal for the Crimson. Ties it up at two to two. Then again, Maple Grove putting pressure. Jack Kernan puts a shot on goal, follows up his rebound, knocks it home. We saw Karkosi kind of uh, struggling a little bit as the goaltender for Edina. And then see back-to-back -back power play goals from Finn Brink. That one on the pass from Gunderson. And Brink finds the back of the net for the last two goals of the period, both in the power play. And that 
put Maple Grove ahead here, five to two. There's your stats through two periods. Shots on goal, heavily favored by Maple Grove, 23 to 15. And scoring chances, 11 to five. And keep in mind, it was three to three scoring chances after period number one. So eight to two, out chanced in that second period. Penalties, not good for Edina. They found the box five times and Maple Grove made them pay. Three for five in the power play. Edina unsuccessful so far in their two power play attempts. Well, let's take a look now at this turkey trout. We talked about the tradition last year. We lost the tournament, unfortunately, to COVID. But look before, it was Maple Grove, both in 18 and 19. Edina before that at 17, Holy Family, 16, Wyzetta, 15. Wyzetta and Moorhead looking to get on the board here. Moorhead looking for its first ever Turkey Trot Championship as they play in about an hour time here against the Wyzetta Trojans. So there you have it, the Turkey Trot brought to you by CCX Media 2021 version. It's been a great two periods of hockey, especially for the local squad, Maple Grove, as they lead five to two. We'll be back to kick things off here in the third period. You're watching the Turkey Trot on CCX. in Plymouth. A lot of fist bumps for this Maple Grove team and that's Finn Brink. He's getting his fair share of them, especially after his last two goals. Scoring twice in the power play to really give Maple Grove a commanding 5-2 lead. And I think it was so interesting to hear the coach Berglund talk about his team. They just needed to calm down. That's what I saw in that first period. It was like, I saw all these, I know these kids are really good hockey players, seen their names, watched them play back when they were Bantams <laughs> even, know that they won Bantam championships and Peewee championships, and uh, they just looked a little nervous, and sure enough, when they did settle down, it really got good for Maple Grove. Yeah, they really started pulling together, and I, I like the puck movement they've used too. I mean, this has been, that's been a st story of stars. I mean, these have all been hardworking goals, and they've really worked hard for it, and, uh, you know, they don't all have to all be pretty. Last year, they had pretty goals with Kukinen, and all the stars they had. This one, they get a little gritty, but boy, there's been some nice play. Crimson looks good. You guys have your TV schedule for these games at all? Maple Grove has eight seniors in their lineup. Two of them are gone here tonight due to playing for the Maple Grove football team in the state championship. And, uh, but of the six seniors that are in the lineup here tonight, a couple of them are playing pretty significant roles, but you're seeing a real significant input from that junior class, and that's the class that has been so successful at the youth levels and why the reason why this uh, high expectations for this Maple Grove team despite the departures of key players. Oh. Great chance right there. Excellent feed from Howard to Trey Fetchko and Fetchko looking to get on the board here tonight. Only one on his line that hasn't scored yet and ha had his best chance of the night right there. We had the first one though without him either. Though That first line for Dan has got to reassert itself and uh, they've come out here and Started started pretty good, but Maple Grove's winning faceoffs, Joe. That has been a real key for yeah, them. Yeah, that's been a that's been a steady force the whole night. Fisher gets the puck deep for Maple Grove. Fisher's been having a good game here tonight. Like I said, he he's got a couple of goals in that stick that he hasn't he hasn't been able to capitalize, <laughs> but he's got a lot of good look got a lot of good looks. I think Dad's going to get a request for a new stick here. Uh, it's a three hundred dollar request. Yeah. Howard into the slot has this shot probably deflected over the net. Sounded like a. Good defensive stick from Maple Grove. Puck gets played to the point now. And a nice deflection oh. in front, but able to see it clearly was Toby Hopp. Toby Hopp is on his game, man. I'm telling you what, watching him a few times here as pucks went by. He never gets too far out of the crease. Stays where he should be, knows where his posts are. He's done a good job tonight. Offensive zone faceoff upcoming for Edina. Jackson Nevers will take it for the Hornets. Finn Brink, the center for Maple Grove, and Brink again wins another faceoff for Maple Grove. And they dump it off the boards and in beautiful angle right there on the clearing attempt by Aaron Tallis. 
and that results in a face-off now on the opposite end. So a nice looking play by Maple Grove to get the puck out cleanly on a face-off one, and now a face-off inside the Edina zone. Dallas has played a good game for the Crimson so far tonight. It's been their best defense by, by a long shot. Number four, along with Marginal, returning vets. Edina wins this draw in the defensive zone, and they break it out cleanly. Nevers gets it into the zone, stopping it behind the goal is Hop. He tried to leave it there for his defenseman, but Edina's forecheck a little bit too quick. A bad, oh. bad D to D pass right there. That's going to result in a regroup in the neutral zone for the Hornets. They toss it in on goal. Hop plays it to his defenseman. Tallis takes it around the right side. Nice hit by Tallis, separating Hornet from Puck. Senerson plays it up ahead. Brink down the left side. Tried to hit Senerson in the slot. Brink with two goals, looking for that hat trick. He has the last two of the game. Just the support of the Crimson. I mean, every time that puck comes loose, there's always a Crimson player there. Steenerson tried to feed it out front for Brink, but had his pass denied. Maple Grove lost the puck at the line there. Good recovery, though, by Stelgis. Stelgis seeing a shift here in the third period. Hasn't been on the ice much. Looks like he might be at the sixth or seventh D. Well-known hockey name in the Osseo Maple Grove community. His dad was a great player for Osseo. Played a, went to the University of Minnesota, but then ultimately ended up out in Vermont. And now he's a youth hockey coach in Maple Grove. And grandpa, grandpa coached the Park Center, coached at, coached at Osseo, and coached at Maple Grove. Yeah, big, big hockey name in the Osseo Maple Grove area, no doubt. Yeah. Even got a few girls playing, too. Dell just has a couple of cousins in the program. There's a lot of, a few of the brothers who had successful careers still live in the area and have their kids in the programs. I, I have to, I would be remiss if I didn't bring up too, we talk about the youth success of this Maple Grove program and Luke Margano is out here. His dad and his grandpa have been oh. members of the hockey community as well. His dad's an excellent youth hockey coach and has coached a lot of these kids and these youth hockey coaches have to be so proud when they watch these kids get up to the high school level and start having some of the success that they're having. Well, to be able to say, too, I mean, we never say, you know, Dan is rebuilding, Dan is re they're reloading. Well, we can say the same thing for Maple Grove, even more so now, yeah. because the kids who haven't been the stars are really stepping up to play here for Maple Grove, so next man up, next man up. There's got to be some concern here for Coach Giles, because uh, some of these mistakes, these sophomores that he needs to step up have been making, um, they'll get better as it goes on, but we talk about the face-offs one. This scoring chance right here wow. was brought to you by uh, a face-off one and scrum opportunity in front of the net by the Crimson. Nice job by Edina, at least not giving up a goal there. That was a pretty tough scrum to face, but again, it came off the face-off. Gunnarsson won the face-off and uh, good scoring chance as a result. This face-off won by Edina, played off the glass, held in nicely by the sophomore Nelson. Trying to center it there was Gunderson. That got denied. Here comes Howard the other way for Edina. Howard puts it right out front for Fetchko, who got a weak little backhander on goal. It was a little bit awkward. Hop made the save. Well, we're getting to a good point now where that first lines are matching up against first lines. Coach Berglund, I don't know if he's gotten a switch around enough or if Kurt Giles is purposely putting his first line up against the first line of the Maple Grove Crimson. Edina with the puck behind the net, worst. Skates it up to the blue line. Nice little deflection into the zone there by Johnson. Oh, Edina, see, these are kind of mistakes. This not Edina hockey right there. Revening essentially dumps it in his own zone. And Hornets... Not even close to his partner. Another sophomore mistake. That's been two by two sophomores on the Adani D here in the past three shifts. Searson chips it out. Scooping it up as Brink. Bouncing, kind of rolling puck. Oh, what a beautiful oh. feed, though. Found Bush in front. Bush couldn't quite handle it. Bush was just as surprised as everybody was that that puck was on his stick all of a sudden. Brink holds it in. Finn Brink now Oof. having an excellent game. Back to get it for Edina was Dexheimer. 
Off the wall, here comes Nevers. Nevers into the offensive zone, two on three. And nice play by Kernan to take him off the puck. Now gets dumped into the corner. To the point. Weak shot, easily intercepted by the Crimson. Now Dino will regroup. Catching it there is Spindler. Spindler will dump it in. There's the Adina, I know. Right there. Just quick transition, move the puck, bing bang, cross ice, in the zone we go, and go get it. Yeah, you know, when we talk to Coach Berg on Maple Grove, he talks constantly about that first pass, that first pass, that first pass. And as this game has gone on, Maple Grove's gotten better and better at that first pass. They've really been able to break it out pretty easily against the Hornets. Oh, man. Chance right in front there for Nathan Jaglo. And it's handled cleanly there by Klarkowski. Klarkowski, again, among the many other Hornets that struggled a little bit in that second period, when he's able to make the save and control the rebound and get a stoppage, Dan is in better hands. What a beautiful move there, and that, that pass was just incredible right on the stick. And then another nice setup and shot there by the Crimson. Clark grabs the puck for Edina, plays it back to the defenseman. And turnover by the Hornets. Chance now, and a, what do you know, another shot in the slot from Fisher. That one handled and swallowed up by Klarkowski. I feel bad for Fisher. He's had some good opportunities. One thing I like about him, he puts the puck on the net. He doesn't mess around. But get it down a little farther into the pads. Don't put it into the chest pad or the glove area of Klarkowski. Put it in his leg pads. He's had trouble controlling the rebounds off his leg pads all night. Gunderson got kicked out of the faceoff dot. Wasn't too happy with that one. Mm -mm. Clark handles it at the wall. Backhands it upwards and out. Dahl down the left side, puts the brakes on. And Stell just was able to break him up. Good shot on goal, and Clark had a chance on the rebound. Hopp was able to cover it quickly before the captain and junior playmaker almost had his second goal of the night. Well, this is Dyna first line here. Clark's line is doing very well. They're playing hard. They make a nice play here. Keep the puck in the zone. They battle hard here. Come out with it. Move the puck. And there we go. We got Hop again just on top of it. His focus is so good right now. Uh, it's going to be tough to get something by him. Brink wins another faceoff for Maple Grove. And Forecheck just not that strong right now for Dyna. They're almost like trapping him at the top of the circle. And they end up working right there. As Vandervolt got a shot but just missed wide. Didn't get much on it. Now Maple Grove comes out the other way. Brink to the neutral zone. Nice step up there by the defenseman Revening. Well, you can see the Hornets are bringing their defense and not retreating so deep. They're going to try and make a play at the red line versus the blue, their own blue line here on the Crimson and not let them get flowing. Revening rang that puck around the boards and ultimately out of the zone for the Hornets. Worst. Has it for Edina, into the zone, one on four. As his forwards went for line change, puts a backhander on net, and Maple Grove plays it out of the zone. A takedown right there, this one not gonna be called. Good no call. Worst with it. Gains the red line, he'll flip it high up over the top of the defense for Maple Grove, into the zone. Turnover there by the Crimson, chance for the Hornets. And that shot misses wide. Now a chance, scrum in front. Couple of good looks for the Hornets and Maple Grove's able to play the puck out. Nice defensive play there by Geese. He won a battle, was able to ice it, but boy, a couple of chances for the Hornets. They're back to what they were doing well in the first period, and that was getting pucks behind the Crimson defense and then getting the four check going. Maple Grove popped the puck up once there, and you see Diana getting the puck to the net and trying to get an ugly one themselves. That's yeah. what got Maple Grove going, right? An ugly goal, kind of a lucky bounce, but that's what sometimes what it takes to get going. Well, the, the Hornets are fighting back really hard. They're doing a nice job there, and they caused those miscues by the Maple Grove D, which we haven't seen in the last two periods. Maple Grove D looks a little flustered. Dahl won the face off there, and a quick snapshot from Trey Fetchko, but it was right in the glove of Hop. so another face off upcoming. Clark oh. on the four check for Edina. Margano with, received the pressure, but still effectively got it out. Now Fisher with it. Tries to center, his pass intercepted by Dexheimer to the line, but not out, held in there by Wente. 
Dexheimer's got to do a better job right down to getting it to a player rather than just dumping it into an open area, open somebody skates it because Maple Grove covers their areas quite well. Saw Clark give it to Dexheimer. Dexheimer rushed it across the blue line, but Edina was offside, so faceoff coming outside the Maple Grove zone. Well, now you see the Cornets, they're double shifting that top line. In fact, they left them out here after what I thought was pretty full shift. And they had just gotten back out there, so they're going to, we're going to see a lot of that Clark line now. Edina back to get the puck. They're ringing around the boards. Bounced out of the zone by Clark. Maple Grove plays it right back in. Clark scoops it right back up. Here comes Jimmy Clark with some speed, throws it on goal. Hop, controls, and covers, and he'll get a whistle and a faceoff inside his zone. A lot of people would say, why did he take that shot when he just got inside the blue line? You're down 5-2. You put the puck on the net. You put it on as much as you can. You never know what will happen, but this line's starting to look a little tired. Well, obviously, at the end of a double shift. We'll face off one and a light shot on goal there for Edina. Maple Grove plays it up through the neutral zone. Scooped up now by Kaden Morgan. Morgan tried to be patient with it, but his space was closed on quick. He ended up turning it over, so they dump it right back into the zone. Now it's Clark. Good breakout pass that time. And here come the Hornets. Oh, nice pass. Nevers into the zone. Three on three. Good back behind the back pass. Oh, man, that was a good one. Good chance for Willie Johnson, who missed high. Now it's Nevers with it again. Excuse me, that's Vandervoort. We have a delayed penalty coming up here on Maple Grove. They'll touch the puck now, and we'll have our penalty on the Crimson. So a slashing penalty coming up on Maple Grove. It's going to give Edina a chance here on the power play. Edina tonight, though, 0 for 2. Hasn't really found its chemistry on the power play as we see the slashing penalty coming up from Jack Kernan. All right, 7.23 to go in the third period. Power play for the Hornets. They have their top unit on the ice. It's Morgan at the left point. Worst at the right point. With the top line. Key play. Key play now for the uh, the Hornets. This is a power play. They, I know it's early in the season, but this would be a good, good time to get that opened up and get them a goal. Worst to Clark. Clark tries to walk it in now. Tries to back it up front. Chance there from Dahl. Puck flipped over the net. Fetchko trying to fight for it, and Maple Grove able to send it all the way down. Maple Grove, real tight box. They had all four of their penalty killers really close in the close to the net. They're not really worried about the points as much, it looks like. They're going to close down everything from the interior. Yep. Clark loses an edge and falls down, tries to regain possession, and is able to get the puck down into the corner. Fetchko goes after it. He ties up. Puck gets played to the point now. This is Morgan to Worst. Down low to Clark, back to Worst. Fake shot, Clark walks it in to Worst. His shot saved nicely by Hop, and then the rebound attempt was sent wide by Morgan and all the way out of the zone. And yeah, Dedina cleared the zone for the Maple Grove Crimson, allowed them to get a change because he missed the net. Maple Grove gets four fresh attackers on the ice too. That's the other key part yes. of that play. Yes, yes. Yes, they had to spend some time to go down and get the puck, but Maple Grove was able to get that line change because of it. That was big. Worst now down in the corner. Gets behind the goal. Plays it along the wall. To Nevers. Nevers gets it back down to Vandervolt. Now it's to Worst. Nevers with it. Vandervolt to Nevers. Playing catch. Kind of not really trying to attack here. Now they go. Vandervolt looking for some help. Margano defending nicely. Good stick as Vandervolt got to the net and right at the last moment. Margano got a nice little contact with a stick and knocked the puck away. And Maple Grove now is at full strength. Nice clearing right there, too. Really nice. Got it up on the boards. Right? The defense point couldn't do anything with it. And out it went. Nice job of penalty killing by the Crimson here. Offsides coming up here on Edina. There was a little bit of a nice defensive stick there at the line yeah. by Maple Grove. Maple Grove uh, burst offensively in the second period. Now they're trying to play that winning hockey and it looks like they're doing so in this third period pretty well. They're, they know they don't, you don't really need another goal to win this game. No. You need sound good defense. They're not giving up much trying to chase that next goal. They're really just playing good hockey right now, winning hockey. 
Yeah, even smart little things like that. Just throw it a few feet ahead of you. Get going because you've got the momentum rolling on it and make them go 200 feet. We're seeing some new players on the ice too. We'll go to the fourth line, getting a little bit of work here. Jacob Sinclair on the four check for Maple Grove. Sinclair has got Jay Ellingson with him, as well as Jaron Geese we've seen on the ice a few times here tonight as well. Bouncing puck handled there by Beck Picanato. Picanato's a name, Beck's a good player. He's, he's a youngster, junior defenseman for Maple Grove. Get to know the last name though, he's got a younger brother that's one of the top first year Bainhams in the state, Tommy Picanato. A lot of these Maple Grove players have younger brothers coming up through the site. Just get used to seeing Maple Grove be successful for quite some time. They're, they're, <laughs> they're absolutely dominating at the, the yes. Pee Wee and Bantam level as well right now. Oh, and they're staying in the program too. They're not running all over the place to an all-star team or the juniors and stuff. They're pretty much staying home and uh, that's helped build them into a strong program. Gunderson scoops up that attempt right there. Gains the zone on his own. Tries to drop pass it to Fisher. Fisher gets checked off the puck. Couldn't quite get that in the right position. And now here comes Clark uh -oh. in the way. Clark trying to show off his speed. Gets the edge, and he's in, he scores! He got around the defender, cut hard on his edge, and tucked it home. There was really nothing Hop could do. Hop had to, he had to get a poke check out. Yep. That's the only way it was going to get stopped, as yep. he blew right by Tallis, the defenseman. And he saw that legit D1 speed right there from Jimmy Clark on his second goal of the night. Tell us, didn't think he had enough room to squeeze in between there, and he sure did. He got nice and low. Now watch him as he comes down. He's got a full steam here, and then just squeezes down inside. Boy, nice move inside there. Boy, just a nice play. He, a little subtle play that he made there is he put the puck a little bit ahead of him, right? He, yep. didn't, he didn't try to stick handle or toe drag yep. the guy. He, he pushed it forward, got around him with his speed, and he met the puck on the other side. Sometimes the best plays are the most basic. Nice looking play right there. Gets Edina right back into this game. It's 5-3 now. Oh, that puck went right to the slot. Edina just wasn't in the right position, but that could have been a great chance. Tarkowski out of his goal. Rings it around the board. Some stealth. Self. Steenerson's there on the four check for Maple Grove. Lucas Bush was the first of the puck for Maple Grove. Cycles it back down low to Brink. Puts a shot right on goal. Seenerson on a rebound from a sharp angle. Forced a blocker save. Dino finally gains possession, but they turn it over right away as they throw it up to the neutral zone. Bouncing puck, race for it right there. Dino gets it into the zone they come. It's revening. Sophomore defenseman loses it there inside the zone. They play it out. And Matt Molman dumps it in for Edina. Maple Grove forwards to get the line change they needed. Morgan, nice pass up ahead to Fetchko. Trey Fetchko down the right side, tried to make a move, lost it. And Maple Grove played it out of the zone. This might have legs to get icing. Nope, it's gonna be waved off as Morgan had caught up to it. Now finds Clark, who's also one goal shy of a hat trick. Here comes Clark with some speed down the right side, lost the puck. Molman centers it out front, had Fetchko who lost it when he caught it. Oh, Fetchko got nailed right there. Taken off the puck by Connor Stelges. Now a turnover, almost a turnover in front of the net there by Picanato. Good recovery by Maple Grove. To the point it goes, Molman, shot, hits traffic in front, just wide. Fetchko tries to center it, now it's Dell, his shot gets blocked. Another block. Couple of key defensive plays for the Crimson. Dinah's pressing now, this is a good opportunity. Cut the deficit to one. Clark plays it to the point. Molman nice. tries to go back door to Fetchko. Held in by Morgan. And Morgan just plays it right back to the Crimson. Why not? Ice it. And so we'll have a face off back down inside that Maple Grove zone. Now, a timeout would be key right now to get your top line back on the ice. They don't have that timeout. They had to use it in the second period when they were reeling a little bit, so. Diana's got to rest up that line quickly here, and with 1.42 to go, they're going to come out here with their second line. They'll go uh, be out there with about 1.25 left. Goalie, Unless they can get a quick change. The goalie is still in the net at the time. Robbie Klerkowski has not come to the bench yet for the extra attacker. Good forecheck put on by the Hornets once again. Nice battle won by Margano though. 
Gunderson able to play the puck out. Great play by Luke Margaret. Won that tough battle. That's where all that off-season workouts comes into hand. Well offsides. Gunderson got trapped down way down deep into the zone. And offsides called him a crimson. But I just mentioned, you know, one of those battles, that's where the weight room comes into hand. There's our preseason rankings. Brought to you by Let's Play Hockey. Maple Grove at the top. Warhead, who we're going to see here tonight. Hill Murray has a little chip on its shoulder after little. last year. <laughs> a little one, yes. I, I wouldn't want to deal with the Pioneers early in the season. They are a little bit angry about how things fared last year with them in the Minnesota State High School League. Wow. To forfeit a game with an opportunity like that, they just got a stick in their craw. Yeah, and Lechner had a good team coming in, too. Yeah. Oh, there it is! Shot on goal and a rebound in front by Willie Johnson. And the Crimson have closed it. Five to four now. The deficit is one. Well, and the young sophomore comes through. And Johnson's one of those players who got significant playing time as a freshman last year. Scored 10 goals and had 17 assists in his freshman season. And he gets the biggest goal of his sophomore year so far tonight. First one of his sophomore year. And it's just crashing net, getting a rebound. And we got ourselves a new ball game. Just couldn't get the handle on it. Dahl wins Toby the face off for Edina. All Fetch right. Fetch go to Dahl. Poked up to the point. Held in. Walk in. Shot just missed. White Worst had a good look there. Now Worst will get it back. Plays it back down low to Clark. Jimmy Clark trying to give himself some space. Loses the puck. Maple Grove plays it out, but the extra attacker on the ice was able to retrieve that puck quickly. Here they come. Fetchko to Dahl. His shot got blocked. Fetchko throws it back out front. Maple Grove gets it. They send it all the way down. This will be icing well wide of the net. And with 25 seconds to go, we're going to have a face-off inside the Maple Grove zone. So we've been talking all night long about how Maple Grove's been dominating the face-off. All of a sudden, they're not dominating the face-off anymore at a critical time in his game. Edina all of a sudden is playing just better hockey because they're pressing, right? I mean, they're just... They're, yep. they're up against the clock, and it's bringing out the best of them. Well, they've worked themselves back into this game again, and by gosh, got some fire. Fetchko gets a shot blocked and a broken stick on top of it. Oh, we got a tie game! A.J. Dahl with his second of the night ties it up at five apiece. The sudden reports of Edina's demise were truly preconceived. Wow. What a nice comeback by the Hornets. Really came back hard. Did a nice job. That first line, that Clark line, has done a great job. Dahl, what a great game. Got the first and now he got the tying goal. Well, you saw what, what Edina started doing is just trying to get pucks to the net. You never yep. know what's going to happen. And on that one, Toby Hopp, who's been so good tonight, Something just kind of happened on that one. It got a weird little deflection, kind of beat him five hole with kind of a soft backhander. Five to five, Dinah and Maple Grove. I understand, folks, it's a tournament. We gotta have a winner. It feels like we've played three different hockey games. Oh, man. We had, the, we had the close first period, we had the all Maple Grove second period, and now we have Edina, the last eight minutes or so, all Hornets. What a comeback. That's, that's just a sign of a well-coached team and a good discipline team. Not to panic. Play your game. Get yourself back in it one goal at a time. And they certainly did that. The Hornets did a great job there. An absolute packed house here in Plymouth. It's standing room only. They're about three, <laughs> they're about three rows deep behind us. Yeah. Standing around the outside of this arena. It's really incredible. I, I don't know if this view even does justice. Just how many people are packed in here tonight. Excited to watch great hockey. And they are seeing it here tonight. There isn't a high school in the state of Minnesota right now, Joe, that wouldn't want to be in this tournament right now. You know, and I'll tell you, they had COVID last year. We didn't have this tournament last year. In fact, we started in January of last year. People are hungry for hockey. And they love high school hockey in this state. And, boy, what a nice start. Top four teams in the, in the state out of the top ten. Two excellent coaches going at each other. Just what a game. Wow. Coach Giles talking it over with his unit right now. One of the biggest significant changes in this in this game a little bit was just the zone possession, where the puck is being played. Edina right now 
they have a little bit of youth back there at the defense. They're not playing that great of a game earlier in the game, especially in that second period. And the biggest change was they just got the puck into the Maple Grove zone where you can be more confident standing on the offensive blue line. Well, with about eight minutes left in the period, he switched his defense philosophy, too. They put him up, don't defend our blue line, defend the red line. And, boy, it stops the Maple Grove runs real quick, especially in that last three minutes there, Joe, where they, like you said, they take it away and, bam, throw it right back in and let's go at her. But the first line of the Hornets did yeoman's work in that last five minutes there because they were out there pretty much for four. Yep. And we're gonna we're calling it the first line the way that Coach Giles is strategically playing today. He's playing them as their second line because you're gonna see they're not on the ice to begin overtime. They weren't on the ice to start some of the periods as well yes. in the game. They're using this line right here, uh, the one with Nevers, Vandervolt, and Willie Johnson. It's a very young line. You got two sophomores and a junior. <laughs> Coach Berglund, uh, he had a different look on his face now. He was doing some smiling and feeling good. Now he ain't smiling so much all of a sudden. Yep, and we just talked about how Maple Grove was playing good winning hockey in that third period, but Dinah just pressed a little bit harder. All right, here we are, overtime hockey. We've got eight minutes of sudden death. I believe this tournament probably has some format to figure out a winner compared to other high school games that would end in a tie. Let's see what happens in overtime here first. The puck gets played out of the zone. It's going to be icing on the Crimson, more of a face-off inside the Maple Grove zone. One thing I do like about uh, the overtime is they act like it's the second period. They do the, the, the cross ice, so it is a harder line change. That creates some scoring chances in and mm -hmm. itself, too, because it's tough to get off the ice, especially in the, you know, the extra session. You're extra tired. Your, your legs are about done for the night. Oh, off the face-off, a great-looking chance there from Trey Fetchko, but missed high. Crimson will swing it around the boards. Fight for the puck there. Nelson, nice deflection to Gunderson. Here comes Gunderson into the zone. Edina has a good defensive posture, though. They have four guys back. Gunderson tries to center it now. Nelson racing for the puck. They leave it at the point for Margano. His snapshot gets blocked. A racing puck scooped up now by Clark. Here comes Jimmy Clark. Oh, he loses the handle. Now he gets it right back, however. Yeah, D to D pass. Shot from the point. And there it is. The winner and the hat trick. A.J. Dahl, who tied the game up late in the third period, gets the game winner a minute and two seconds into the overtime as that puck from the point. Toby Hobbs saw it, did not glove it cleanly, rebound sat there, and Dahl cleaned it up for the Hornets. I wish Kurt Giles would calm down a little bit. He's just going absolutely crazy over there in the Edina side. What? You know, just a well-coached team, you know, both these clubs, and all of a sudden, the Dinah caught fire, and they put the pressure on him, you know what? All of a sudden, that defense from Maple Grove wasn't playing so good, and it's tough. The last two minutes is really where it got caved in. Now Maple Grove and Edina trying to figure out if they shake hands or not this year. It's been a long time since these guys have shake hands. I think last year they did the, 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 the whatever, the stick claps and stuff, so they're shaking hands again. Some of the Maple Grove players have forgot about that, but... Still one of the best traditions in sports right here. Wow, what a shock. What was that, four unanswered goals? Yeah, I think it was four unanswered goals by the, by the Hornets. I tell you what, we're sitting here in the second intermission to not see the game ending like this. No, not at all. You know, I, I thought uh, Edina gave it a little bit of push because the push didn't even come till late in the third period. Yeah, with about seven minutes to go, they got that goal to make it a three-goal differential or two-goal differential. It's why you you never get down. I mean, you're down three goals to a good Maple Grove team. You just keep on coming. But traffic in front of the net, that's the story of the game for Edina. When they started getting traffic in front of the net and putting pucks on goal, good things happen. Bingo. Hit it right on the head. So we know Edina's in the championship game now. We don't know whether they'll play until five or three, or five or seven o'clock, but that will be on the outcome of the Moorhead Wyzetta game coming up here uh, in just a few minutes. So folks, stick with us. We still got some great hockey coming. Of course, Moorhead and Wyzetta. Moorhead, a team that is picked to be back at the Exxon Energy Center and picked to go to state once again. They have a, a, a tough section up there with Rosal this year. Rosal's a very good opponent in Section 8. They're going to be very good. But uh, Moorhead coming down here. Exciting to see this team playing against a 
solid defensive Wyzetta squad as well. That's what's coming up next on CCX. Your final here in the opener, it's Edina 6, Maple Grove 5 in overtime. AJ Dahl with the game winner and the game tire and the hat trick.